Sometimes a pattern tells you to stitch on the side of your work. For example, if we're making a border around this square, then I'm going to need to crochet along the side of these rows right here. This is 22 stitches of half double crochet, but it's only 16 rows. So I'm not putting exactly one into the side of every stitch. I'm not putting exactly two into the side of every stitch. Now you can do your math and you can figure out exactly how many getting one, are getting one and how many are getting two. But what I like to do is divide my side that I'm working into and divide the number that I'm working and kind of figure out how to distribute stitches that way. So let me show you that. This row, this uh, border, I'm going to start off with just my th chain three. This is actually going to be my little corner turning chain here. And now along the side of this work, I know that I need to make 22 stitches because this has 22 stitches on the top and the bottom and it's a square, so it's 22. You do whatever your pattern tells you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this in quarters. So I'm dividing it there and just tossing a little stitch marker where I folded it in half. And now I'm folding that half in half and tossing a little stitch marker on. And I'm folding this half <laughs> in half, maybe, and tossing a little stitch marker on. Okay, um, in this case, just folding it in half or even folding it in fours like I did in quarters is totally fine. Sometimes when you're working with something larger, you'll have to divide it into, you know, more times than that. But I like to go ahead and just divide it up evenly. And now what I have is fourths on the side of my work. I need to work 22 stitches. So 22 divided in half is 11. So I know there's 11 here and 11 here. 11 divided in half is 5.5, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put five here, one right there, and five here, and that'll give me 11, okay? <laughs> so I just know that I need to, in, I need to do five, 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 and toss an extra one in somewhere over here and somewhere over here in order to get my 22. So that's all I'm going to do. I'm gonna look at this and you can kind of look at it and say and plan out where you wanna put your stitches. You just wanna to try to be pretty even, as even as possible. Uh, let's see, two, three, four, five. See, I'm just going into the side and then I'm gonna put this extra stitch right here where that marker is. Now I'll take off the marker, I'll need it for the other side. And that's number six, that's my extra one. Now I'm gonna put five in between these two markers. And five. Now I can take off this stitch marker. And I'm going to put five in between these two stitch markers and then that's when I need to add in my little extra one. five and then I'm going to add in my extra stitch right here where the stitch marker is and take out the stitch marker. There's my extra stitch, six, and then five more along this side, one, and five. And then I'm just doing my chain two, you know, follow your pattern. And now I have my 22 stitches along this um, bottom top, bottom of my work. And so I'm just going to crochet one into each one of these 22 stitches. Okay, I've got my 22 stitches along the bottom, so now I'm going to chain two, and I need to put my 22 stitches along the side. So again, I'm going to divide this in quarters. Now while I'm doing this, I wanna talk about what if you don't know how many stitches you need to put in here? What if it's not a square and or it's not a written pattern, and so therefore you don't have the answer, right? What you want to do is a little bit of math. Sorry. What you need to do first is find your gauge. So take some sort of a ruler that can show you four inches. So you need a ruler that's at least four inches long, 
and you're going to count how many stitches, make sure you're counting the stitches and not the rows, are in four inches. So you count the number of stitches that are in four inches and you write that down, okay? That should hopefully be a whole number. Write down that whole number of how many stitches are in four inches. Now, take that number and divide it by four. This might not be a whole number. It might end in 0 0.25, 0 0.5, or 0.75. That is totally fine. Don't worry about it. Hold on to that number that tells you how many stitches are in one inch. Don't just measure how many stitches are in one inch. Measure how many stitches are in four inches and divide it by four. Now that you have how many stitches are in one inch, what you want to do is measure along the side of the work that you need to put stitches into. So in this case, I would measure this entire area. And if this were rounded, then that's fine. I could take a, a bendable, you know, just a, a measuring tape like what you use for fabric, right? And I could measure along the entire side, see how many inches it is, take that number that I have written down of how many stitches are in each inch, multiply it the number of inches that my piece is, and I now know how many stitches I need to put into that entire piece. Another thing you can do now, you know, if your piece is really long, well, you know exactly how many stitches are in four inches, right? So you can divide your piece into four inch chunks and you really easily know how many stitches go into each one of those four inch chunks. So there's a couple ways that you can figure out how many stitches to put along the side of your work if the answer isn't quite so obvious. So now we're ready to put our five and a half stitches into each quarter of the side of this work. And something else I want to let you know is when you're putting a border on to something, if that something is a solid color, I always recommend at least doing a single crochet border in the same color before switching colors. Even if you're, you know, your intention is that you're making this and your border is going to be black or purple or whatever, do this very first row and, you know, very first round in like single crochet in the same color in the orange like we're doing right now. That was my five, right? And then this is my six that goes right where that stitch was, marker was. The reason for that is this row of stitches right here, if you kind of look over here where we worked on them already, they're not always going in in exactly the same, you know, the same amount down. Some of them are a little shorter. Some of them are a little longer. It can get a little messy. But if you're making it in the same color, you don't really see that unless you're looking really up close. By making your first border round in the same color as the actual piece, or at least in a color that blends nicely with the actual piece, if the piece is multicolored, what happens is when you then go ahead and make your next border round in your border color, it's going to have a much cleaner and crisper look. And then we're going to do our top, which is, I have my chain two, and we'll just do 22 stitches. There are 22 stitches across the top, so we're just going to stitch evenly across the st top, one stitch in every one stitch, and we will have our border done. So like I said, the first round of your border, you want to use the same color as the item that you're putting the border on, and if the border, if the item is more than one color, then whatever color blends the best with the most of it. That way your border will look as neat and even as possible. And then with the next round, you can start changing colors. That really is a great way to just kind of even things out, give yourself a nice, crisp, clean look. And it's also something you can do if you have, if you have an item that may not necessarily need a border, but you're not incredibly thrilled with the look of the edge, adding one on can help, okay? You can see this first route row, this first round of borders still has a couple little like dips or whatever in it, but I can block it out into a much nicer look than I could have before. And I could always do another round. Well, the next round should probably make it almost perfect, right? So, you know, you just kind of figure out what you need to do to make your 
piece look as good as possible. And hopefully this has helped you with how to crochet along the side of your work when you need to add a border or anything else for that matter. There you go. Happy crocheting. <laughs>